Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over defensive systems for the Tomcat. The Tomcat has three defensive systems, the RWR, the countermeasures dispenser, and the jammer. First I'll go over the RWR. The RWR detects radar waves and displays them. There's an RWR display in the back seat here, and there's also one in the front seat right here. The display has a knob on it where you can control the brightness. The control panel for the RWR is in the back seat. It's right here. Here is a power switch. You can also press this switch to enable a test. If you left click it, it will start the test. Also, while it's doing the test, if you right click it, it will display the special test menu, which is just a bunch of zeros. You can control the volume with this knob right here. Also, the pilot has a separate volume control, which is this knob right here. It also has this mode switch. There's normal mode. AI is for airborne interceptor, and if you have it set to that, it'll prioritize those contacts for the display. And you can set it to AAA to prioritize anti-aircraft artillery cannons, and you can set it to unknown to prioritize unknown targets. Friend is the same thing as normal. The only difference is that friend will also show radar contacts from things that are on your team. I would just leave it set to normal. For example, I'm in normal mode right here, but now it shows interceptor. There's also this switch here. If you hold it down, it'll put the RWR into limit mode, which will only show the six most dangerous threats. And if you hold it up, it'll put it into offset mode, which will separate all the threats in case there's any on top of each other so you can see them all. The RWR is split into three bands. If something comes up in the inner band, that means it's a low threat. So it's either not capable of attacking you or it's out of range. If something is in the middle band, that's kind of a medium threat. It means something is in range to get a lock on you, but it's just not locking you right now. And if something is in the outer band, that is a critical threat, which means that it's either locking you or it's firing at you. And also, if something is firing at you, then its symbol will be flashing here. The RWR also has audio. It can make four different noises. The first noise is just a regular beep it makes when something new pops up onto the display. The second noise is the special noise. The special noise is four beeps right next to each other. If you hear four beeps right after each other, that means a special target has entered your display. And in DCS, it considers a special target as anything that can engage you without setting off the missile warning. For example, an F-16 would be considered a special target because an F-16 can engage you in track while scan mode, which means that when it fires the missile, you won't get a warning. So since an F-16 is considered a special target, if it pops up your display, instead of doing the regular single beep, it'll do the special warning, which is the four beeps right after each other. Those are the first two sounds. There's also two other sounds. One of them is just alternating beeps, and that will play if something is locked onto you. And the last one is really fast alternating beeps, and those will play if something has fired a missile at you. Now I'll go over some examples for the sounds. First, I'll show you an example of the normal beep. I'm gonna set this to friend mode. And you can see as things popped on the display, it played the singular beep. Now I'm going to enable an F-16 in the mission to give you an example of the special beep. That's what the special beep sounds like. Now I'll place down an SA-10 to show you what the lock warning and the missile launch warning sound like. That's what the lock warning sounds like and that's what the missile warning sounds like. Also, the middle of the RWR will show you what mode you're in. Also, the RWR has some lights right here, and it also has lights right here for the pilot. There's three lights, AM, AAA, and AI, which is for air interdictor. The Rio also has an extra light, which is CW for continuous wave. The way that it works is that if anything enters the critical band, its respective light will turn on. For example, if a SAM enters the critical band, then you'll see the SAM light right here. However, keep in mind, I've also seen the lights come on even when something is not in the critical band. I think a lot of times, even if something just sees you on its radar, the warning light will come on here. Also, if these warning lights flash, that means it's firing a missile at you. Last thing to go over with the RWR is the gesture control. From the gesture menu, you can go to countermeasures and RWR, and then you can go to display type, and then you can choose the display priority type for the RWR. That was the RWR, now let's go over the countermeasures dispenser. The countermeasures dispensers are these things on the bottom of the plane. They can hold chaff and flare bundles. In the control panel, you're gonna see one that says the left dispenser and one that says the right dispenser. But in reality, the left one is the front dispenser and the right one is the rear dispenser. Also, each dispenser has two sections. One of the sections can hold 10 cartridges and the other one can hold 20 cartridges. So altogether, one dispenser can hold 30 cartridges. And since there's two dispensers on the plane, you can have 60 cartridges in total. If you want to see what is loaded into what dispenser, 
You can hold right shift and click K to open the kneeboard and go to the page that says initial loadout. And you can see in the left dispenser, which is actually the front one, we have all flares loaded. And in the right dispenser, which is actually the rear one, we have all chaff loaded. Now let's go over how to actually load flare and chaff into the plane. In the F-14, you cannot load flare and shaft normally through the ground rearming menu. If I go to the rearming menu, you can see the flare and shaft counters are actually disabled. There's two ways you can load them in. The first way is through the mission editor. You click on your plane and click the triple dot button, and you can set the ANALA39 loadout here. You also might notice this setting that says fill LAU 138 with shaft. I'll go over that a little bit later. The other way you can load flare and shaft in is through the menu. You click backslash on your keyboard, go to ground crew, and go to this thing that says select ANALE39 loadout, and then it has the options just like the mission editor. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select 60 flares, and if you open the kneeboard, you'll notice that if you select it through the menu, it doesn't change it. You can see there's still a bunch of chaff loaded in. The reason why is because after you select it in the menu, then you have to rearm and refuel. I'm gonna go ground crew, rearm, and refuel and you don't actually have to put anything on your plane you just have to click OK. Request rearming. Rearming complete. Once the crew chief says rearming complete then you can open your kneeboard and you can see now it has all my flares loaded in. Now I'll go over the control panels for the countermeasures. There's two control panels, the front one and the back one. I'll go over the back one first. You have these switches here to set if you have chaff or flare loaded into each section of the two dispensers. These two top switches are for the front dispenser and the two bottom switches are for the back dispenser. Now most of the time you don't have to set this. This will already be set to however you had it in the mission editor. The only time you have to set this is if you did what I just did where I changed it with the menu here. So if you change it and then rearm and refuel, what you have to do is open the kneeboard and look what it says here. So L10 is F, so I already have F. L20 needs to be F, so I'm going to set it to F. R10 should be C and R20 should be F. And then you click the reset button. The manual says you need to hold the reset button for five seconds, but I think if you actually just click it, it still works anyways. Also, you might have seen this J here. This is for jammer cartridges, but it's not modeled in DCS, so don't worry about it. The other things on this panel control the countermeasure programs. Blue is for chaff, yellow is for flare, and these white ones are for the jammer. And once again, the jammer cartridges are not in DCS, so you can just ignore these white ones on the bottom. For the chaff, there's bursts and salvos. You can set a burst count and a burst interval and a salvo count and a salvo interval. For example, my burst count is 2 here with 0.2 seconds and my salvo count is 1 with 2 seconds. So what that means is when I activate the chaff program, it'll deploy 2 chaff in the first burst and the chaff will come out 0.2 seconds apart. And since I have a 1 here, it'll only do that burst one time. But I could set it to something like 4, so it'll do that burst 4 times and in total it'll shoot out 8 chaff. And I'll demonstrate this later. For the flares, it's a little bit simpler. You just set how many flares you want to come out when you activate the program and how many seconds apart. Also for the chaff, you may have noticed for the burst quantity, there's C and R. If you have it set to C, then it will just continuously dump out all your chaff until you run out. And if you have it set to R, it'll just shoot out a random amount of chaff. And you can also set a random time for the burst interval. Now I'll demonstrate the countermeasures programs. I'm gonna have two chaff per burst and I'll have them separated by 0.1 seconds and I'll have that run two times, separated by two seconds. Then all you have to do is right click on the chaff switch to program, and you should see the 30 go down to 26 when it's done. Now I'll demonstrate the flares. I'll just fire two flares and have them separated by two seconds. So let's activate the flare program. So that was this panel down here, now let's go over the rest of this panel. I've already showed what these two switches do when you set them to the program position, but you can also deploy one single chaff or one single flare by just left clicking on it like this. And also the jammer switch doesn't do anything. Then you have the power switch here. Manual is just the normal mode, but you can also set it to auto. In auto mode, if the RWR detects that something's firing a missile at you, then it'll automatically activate the countermeasures programs. And then once the program's over, it'll wait 30 seconds, and after 30 seconds, if it detects that something is still firing at you, it'll activate the program again. Then there's the salvo flare switch. If you do this, it'll deploy all your flares in case you need to make an emergency landing. And then lastly, there's the flare mode switch. If you have this set to normal, then when you activate a flare program, it'll deploy one flare at a time. But if you have it set to multi, then it'll fire one flare from all the dispensers that have flares loaded in. For example, right now it's on normal, so I'm going to put the flare dispenser switch to single and you can see it just fired one flare, but if I set it up to multi, 
it fired two flares. Then there's the pilot position. In this position, the pilot can deploy flares by clicking the DLC button, which is this key binding right here. As the pilot, I can press the DLC button to deploy flares. If you have this set to anything other than pilot, like normal or multi, then when the pilot presses the DLC button, it'll fire a chaff instead. Now I'll go over the thumb switches for the Rio. The Rio has an alternative way to activate the countermeasures. Instead of clicking these switches here, he also has these two thumb switches right here. Unfortunately, you cannot click them in the cockpit, so you have to bind these ones. You can bind the left data dispenser switch or the right data dispenser switch. You only have to bind one of them because they both do the exact same thing. Also, you do not need to bind the jammer program because once again, the jammer bundles are not modeled in DCS. If you press the switch up, it'll deploy a single chaff. If you press it down, it'll deploy your chaff program. And if you press it left, it will activate your flare program. The switch does not have the ability to activate a single flare. So if you want to do that, then you're going to have to bind pressing this switch down which is this key bind here, ANALE39 flare single. Lastly, you can see these counters up here. Now in the mission editor, the counters will already be set properly, regardless if you're doing a cold start or a hot start. The only time you'll have to set them yourself is if you change them on the ground. And in order to do that, you just hover your mouse over and you can scroll on it like this. Keep in mind, keep in mind, even if your counters are set incorrectly, it doesn't matter, it'll still work. It's just nice to have them set properly so you can know how many of each countermeasure you have left. Even if you have the countermeasures set all the way down to zero, as long as you actually have countermeasures still in the plane, then they will still fire when you activate the switch. The last thing to go over with the chaff and flare dispensers is the Lao 138. The Lao 138 are wing pylons the Tomcat has that allow it to hold extra chaff. The extra chaff are actually loaded onto these pylons right here. You have to enable the Lao 138 from the mission editor. You click on your plane, click the triple dot button, and click fill Lao 138 with chaff. Now one thing I want to go over, if you go over station 1A or 8A and go to air-to-air -air missiles, you can see Lao 138 with the Sidewinder. Now you actually do not need to have the Sidewinder on the rail. Even if you remove it, the pylon is still there and it will still work. All you have to do is make sure Fill Lao 138 is selected here. The way you can tell if you have Lao 138 filled with chaff on your plane is by opening the kneeboard and going to the initial loadout page. And if you see Lao 138, that means they are filled with chaff. If you have the Lao 138 on your plane, it gives you 40 more chaff bursts. As you can see, I have 70 chaff bursts in total right here. There's not really anything else to set up with the Lao 138. It should be working fine. The only thing to keep in mind is that, remember how I went over those sections earlier? Here's the two sections for the front dispenser and also two for the rear dispenser. If you're programming this panel right here, if you have Lao 38 on your plane, then for the right dispenser or really the rear dispenser, the R20 should be set for the whole rear dispenser and the R10 should be set for the Lao 138. So if you have the Lao 138 loaded, no matter what, R10 should be set to check. And then for R20, you want to set it to just whatever is loaded for R10 and R20. The last thing I want to note about the chaff and flare dispensers is that if you go to pylon 3 and go to pods, you can see this thing that says expanded chaff adapter. And you can see it'll equip this pod on the plane that has a bunch of chaff cartridges. Now the thing is, I'm not sure how this works. The manual didn't mention it, I couldn't find anything about it online. And after messing around with it, I really don't know how to get it to work. So maybe I'm just doing something wrong, or maybe it just doesn't work right now, I'm really not sure. So you can equip the expanded chaff adapter, but I'm not sure how to use it. Last thing to go over is the DECM or the Digital Electronic Countermeasures. In real life, this has different jamming modes that it can use. However, in DCS, it's just modeled as a noise jammer. The way that it works is that when it receives radar waves, it automatically starts jamming. It has this audio switch here. However, no matter how much I mess with it, I can't get it to play any audio, so I'm not sure if the audio really works right now. The power switch is right here. If you set it to standby, if you see a standby light come on, that means you need to wait for it to power up. The manual says it takes five minutes to power up. These two sections, this one that says hold three seconds and the one that says active is for the test. The way that it's supposed to work is you're supposed to put it here for three seconds and then you're supposed to put it to active. 
And then there's supposed to be some lights right here, but I'm not sure if it's modeled right now. I can't get it to work. Then there's the receive mode. If you have it set to receive, then you should be able to hear audio signals and it will detect radar waves. It just won't jam anything. And then if you put it on to repeat, then once it detects a radar wave, it'll start jamming. There's no point of putting it to receive because as far as I know, the audio doesn't do anything. So you might as well just leave it on repeat. Also, there'll be some lights that show up right here. When the jammer receives a signal, it'll say receive. And when it starts jamming, it'll say transmit. Here are what the lights look like. Those were defensive systems for the Tomcat. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.